<laughs> they don't have a cough. They don't have a cough along right. the way. Right. <laughs> okay, it is 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Should we get started? <laughs> Whenever you're All right. Ready. Well, I will go ahead and get this kicked off this morning. So for those of you who don't recognize my voice at this point, my name is Michelle McNertney. I'm the vision administrator of workforce services at IWD. So I am just going to kick this off quickly for the core partner team, which is a team of leadership from Iowa Workforce Development, Title II Adult Education, um, and Title IV Voc Rehab Services, which is Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation Services and Iowa Department for the Blind. Um, as you know, as the core partner team, we recently published local planning guidance, and this is training number two in um, that process for you all as local areas. And so understanding labor market information for local planning is our topic today. Our trainers are Ryan Murphy and Donna Burkett from the Labor Market Information Division at IWD. I am going to turn it over to them, and they are going to share with you all things LMI. So go ahead. Thanks, guys. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for having us. And so, uh, again, I'm Ryan um, with Labor Market Information Division, Iowa Workforce Development. Uh, today, we're going to uh, kind of go through the focus on the items that um, are needed for your planning, uh, the data needed for your planning. And so, Don and I are going to flip back and forth between e um, each other's programs, and also we're, we're going to flip back and forth between uh, the presentation and uh, the actual website itself. So if you do have, uh, you're obviously in front of a computer, I assume, um, you can follow along on the website. And you know if you have questions at that time, we do like to treat this very informal, kind of like a workshop. If, if you have questions at any time, please don't hesitate to, to ask. Um, and interrupt us, or if you are um, like me and you don't think of the question that you had until you are mowing or hopefully not shoveling snow any longer this year, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us because that's what we are here to do. Uh, Donna, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yep. Yeah. Hi, I'm Donna Burkett. So I'm the other um, bureau chief in the labor market information division. So we're just um, Glad that we're here today and hopefully we can get you started um, in the right direction with using LMI. But one thing we do want to say, like interrupt us if we're doing something and you're like, what the heck? Um, and you, you're welcome to call us and email us too. Like if you can't find something or if um, you, need, you have a question, we may have the information, but we do um, gather information from a lot of other sources. So don't be scared of it. You can be scared, but don't don't worry about reaching out to us. So. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't want to scare them. Well, <laughs> let's get started. Um, sure. So here's our contact information uh, when you do have those questions. Um, if you do have questions, also you can put them in the, the chat box, and Michelle will. will... Chat, please, because that was pretty quick. I can't write that fast. Oh well, we'll we'll PDF this up also and send it over to Michelle so that she yeah. can distribute and to the Jim, group. Sorry right. to interrupt, Brian. Jim, yeah, we will be posting the recording of the training and the PDF on the state board website where all the other local planning guidance is, so it'll be available um, to you when we're done. All right, thank you. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. We could play a little game, see how much you can get in the time that it took me to flip through the, Ooh, through the slide. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, so if you do have a question, you can put it in the chat box too if you don't want to uh, chime in over the mic and Michelle will um, let us know. Um, again, we'll, we'll stop once in a while for questions. Uh, again, uh, the objective of today, our, our goals are to um, help you understand what data is available so that when you do your plans, you can identify the local in-demand industries and the occupations and the skills and education levels needed for those, those, those jobs. Um, identify what is needed by the employers in your local areas and then um, be able to go out to our website, access where that uh, the labor force data is. Um, that way, 
one one of our goals is to basically teach you how to fish um, because some of the data that we have updates every um, every week, every month, and so it's it's going to be changing, and um, we just want to make sure that you know where to go when that those are published, uh, and we'll highlight which ones those are as we work through it. Uh, first of all, what is labor market information? What does, we'll say LMI and um, th that means labor market information. But if we do say any other um, acronyms that you're not familiar with, uh, please don't hesitate to call us out on that. We do try to avoid those, but um, I think we've both been working in government so long that um, it, you don't even realize you do it anymore. So, um, well, labor market information or LMI, our goal in the division is to collect, analyze, and report data um, regarding the labor market. So labor supply, labor demand, um, and really this information is used by numerous stakeholders, whether that's um, empl employers, businesses, nonprofits, um, career planning and uh, preparation uh, organizations, uh, Department of Education, local community colleges, and K through 12. Um, we provide information regarding the, the job search opportunities, hiring, and um, you know other public uh, elect, elected officials that um, are concerned with the labor market and uh, some of the notable numbers that come out of our shop. Uh, the unemployment rate, which uh, is probably the main attraction of our circus, and uh, uh, Donna can correct me if I'm wrong, but the new unemployment rate will come out next week. So we'll have those. Um, occupational wages, occupational wages are the second most requested uh, data that we get from um, employers and local economic developers, workforce professionals. Um, we'll touch on those in this presentation. Uh, forecasts for occupations and industries. So what are the, um, what's the demand expected to look like in uh, two years or 10 years? Um, current employment in those occupations and industries, career exploration resources. So if you're helping individuals uh, decide what it is they want to, to do, uh, what career path they'd like to go down. Um, touch on labor shed studies, which is labor availability study. We'll go into more detail on that. And then unemployment insurance statistics. So um, what are we seeing at I Workforce Development in terms of um, unemployment insurance claims? Uh, what industries, what occupations? Uh, the demographics on that so the claims uh, are a hot item though now too they are they are unfortunately um they are and we'll yeah we're going to go into more detail on that i'll show you kind of the spike that happened about a year ago now um as we go through this presentation we do want to ask that you always have in the back of your mind, what labor market information do I need? What am I looking for in my day-to-day -day work? What are the, the numbers that I need? And if we aren't covering it, please make sure that you point out that we're not and so that we can. But if there's something that you we don't have, this is a good way for us to see if there's um, a way for us to provide this information. We've taken feedback and um, data requests for numerous years and if, the, if if we see enough of it, then we'll try to figure out how to put that into our programming so that we can um, provide that information to you and, and other stakeholders. All right, so this is gonna be the, the part in the presentation where um, we're gonna jump in and out of the website and the presentation. And so all of our, this is our homepage, all of our information that we produce is uh, publicly available on at iowalmi.gov, you can see the um, the uh, URL at the top of the screen. We do have a, a guide that we'll, we'll send out along with this with um, the information that Michelle is going to send out to the group that will help you navigate as well. But at this point, I am going to jump out to the website. Donna, was there anything I, I missed in that uh, kind of overview introduction? I think you're good. All right. And let's see if we can try. Probably don't hear that too one. often. I do not. Um, you should be seeing the LMI homepage now. Can somebody give me a confirmation that that actually happened? 
We good? All right. So, um, like I said, all of our information that is uh, we publish is kept at iowalmi.gov. Um, it doesn't mean we don't take on additional requests, but this is where we have reoccurring reports and uh, publish, published data. The top of our, all of our web pages are, will have this ribbon across the top, um, you know, with the six boxes. And what we've done is we have categorized the data that we collect and produce in the products um, based upon uh, a couple of items. So we have indicators at the top, which is if you hover over it, you'll get a drop down box. And these indicators um, do provide or are, are data that people use and economists use to determine how well the, uh, the economy is doing, the labor market's doing. And this data is updated the most frequently. So um, it is updated typically once a month. Some of these are updated like uh, the unemployment insurance statistics. Uh, they are now updated uh, on a weekly basis. We uh, historically didn't need to do that uh, up until the pandemic hit. And then we, the demand for more um, current weekly data uh, was needed. So we have pr produced some uh, new weekly reports that we'll, we'll touch on. The next box over, the next category, industry. So this is data that is all related to employers and what those employers do. So um, manufacturing, retail, accommodation, food services, healthcare, and social assistance. Um, when you think of industry, think about what it is that that employer's activities uh, do. So um, you do have instances where um, like high V or uh, they do multiple things, but they make most of their revenue from uh, grocery sales. So they do fall into the, like into that category. Uh, next box over, it includes occupations. So occupations, um, sometimes people get occupations and um, industries mixed up um, when they're talking about it. Occupations has to do with any data related to what it is a, a, an employee does. Um, it, their activities, so if they're a surgeon, their activities are repairing bodies with surgical tools, right? Or, um, but they probably work in the healthcare industry, for example. There's a, a definitely a relationship between industry and the occupations found in those industries. And we'll touch on that in staffing patterns. But when you think of occupations uh, and weight, um, like, what does a welder make? We're gonna think about the welder is the occupation, probably working in the manufacturing or construction industry, um, but you would come to the occupations category to uh, find information specific to that, that job. Uh, research is our next tab over. So the, this is um, reports and labor market information that doesn't necessarily fall into the other three categories and or we do um, on a, sp a special request or we receive a grant for. Uh, we've you know done reports on green jobs. We have some I hear regarding uh, uh, college student brain drain, the college student retention survey. Uh, we look at registered apprenticeship programs in our state. Um, resources. So resources. This is the last category, and these are. Um, data that um, ha either we don't have within our, we don't produce within our, our workforce development, but it is valuable for our stakeholders. So we have labor force demographics that use the census data. We've got links here to, if there's new data that's released, there's a, a, a news release and announcements page that you can go to to see what is the newest data that's been published. We have an outside resources. So we have links to, Oops, sorry about that. Um, outside resources. So uh, the Bureau of Economic Analysis, Census, um, you know, all kinds, there are all kinds of federal, state, and nonprofit um, organizations that do reporting, uh, specific reporting on the labor market or have data points related to the labor market. And so we want to make sure to share those with, with our users. Uh, special publications. We do have a, a frequently asked questions page. So that's a good resource. Um, if you want to check that real quick, if you do have a question or can't find something. 
um, Tableau guide. So Tableau is uh, the tool, the data tool that we use to publish um, a lot of the data that we have um, in far as terms of dashboards and uh, we'll go through that a little bit, but there is a guide if you, if you start using that tool and you have questions. I mentioned the site guide that we'll be sending out. Um, there's a page and a, a PDF that will allow you to do that. And then also if um, you can subscribe to our mailing list. So if we, uh, about once a, once a quarter, we do send out an email blast letting our, our users know that, um, hey, new industry employment data has been released if you're interested. And then you can go look to see for your area or, or, the, or the data point that you're interested in. So. That's kind of the, the rundown of the ribbon at the top. I want to point that out because this will, again, follow you throughout the site. It will be on every page. And if you get, to, um, you get to a point down a rabbit hole and you can't figure out how to get back to where you were, you can always hit this LMI home page, LMI home button here, and this will it'll take you back to, back to the home page. So... Uh, Going to scroll down just to give you a kind of a lay, uh, the layout of each page that we have. Um, the home page will always look the same. We update some of the newest current employment for the state as a whole. You're going to want more localized information. Um, here's also the news releases that we have. We highlight some occupations here. But what I do want to point out is we do have contact information at on the bottom of every single one of our pages with um, the email and phone number to the, the program expert. So if you do have a question and you want to reach out directly to the individual who puts that together, um, you can do that. You can call them or send them an email. Uh, we also have an LMI feedback form. So you can come out here and check the box of the program you have a question about. Um, type it in the, the box here put in your email address and let us know if you want to be contacted back or if you just have feedback on how we could improve the site. Um, we do appreciate that because uh, we have made multiple changes uh, to the site based upon feedback we've gotten from our uh, local offices and local economic developers and just our, our users in general. So we do we always want to make sure that we're providing the information in a way that's useful for you because we understand if, you know, we can do all this work and put out a report or put published data, but if um, our users don't understand it or don't know how to access it, then um, it really isn't that useful for anyone. So um, that's kind of the rundown, the layout of the, the website. So I might want to make sure to touch on that. And I'm going to pop into into the presentation. Hop back and forth. All right, so hopefully you're seeing the presentation. Um, sorry, went back to the beginning. So here's kind of the, the plan um, for the next, uh, you know, hour and a half or so. Um, we're going to look at employment, so we're going to look at labor force, we're going to uh, look at industry employments, the forecast for those industries, these are going to be very important for you as you're doing your plans. Uh, Donna is going to touch on, on most of these, uh, including the staffing patterns. Then we're going to look into available labor. Um, there's some resources regarding that. Um, and then employer needs. And offerings will be next. And then we're going to touch on uh, the demographics. So you'll be able to at least have some resource to look at the demographics um, for your local areas or know where to find that. Okay, so now we're going to hop back to the web. Donna, I'm going to let you boss me around and tell me where I should be driving um, under Laos. Okay. I think that's what the next one on the slide. If I get out of, out of alignment with our plan, please holler. So I'm going to hit indicators, everyone. You can see the drop down box happens and then we'll have um, the unemployment rate and labor force. Go ahead, Donna. Can you hear me? My phone muted by itself. <laughs> okay. You hear me now, right? 
perfect. So this is, we call it LAOS. LAOS, we have a lot of acronyms, but Local Area Unemployment Statistics. This is basically um, a very important indicator. It is monthly. Uh, as Ryan said, we're going to be releasing information Monday will be some new data, but it provides information as such as who, how many people are employed, how many people are unemployed, how many people are in the labor force, what's the unemployment rate. Now, this is not, this is so it's unemployment rate. It's not, uh, some people may say, well, what's the unemployment insurance rate? Well, that is not this. This is just unemployment. So the people counted in this uh, survey, it's a household survey, are 16 and over. You don't necessarily have to be unemployed to be counted and receive, I mean, receiving unemployment benefits because everybody may not receive them. They may not qualify. They may have run out. They may not have applied. So there's different factors that require during this household survey. They have to be 16 and over and actively looking for work and available for work. And I say that because people think that we're not counting it correctly. Well, we are, that's the definition we're provided by the federal government. So all states provide this data to the federal government the same way. So not included would be people like students, if they're in a nursing home, if they're in the military, um, people that are in facilities and incarcerated, uh, they're not able to, if you think about it, people who are incarcerated just can't go out and get a job. They're kind of stuck where they are. So that's, I wanted to give you the definition and have you have an understanding of what you're going to be looking at. So this is a really great tool. Most of our pages will have um, a CSV file or Excel file for heavy data users. So if you just, for some reason, want to look at and go back further than we have on the website or in that fashion, that's fine. We have that available too. So what you see in the middle is the unemployment rate map for December. That changes every month. And the tab we're on, we have several tabs across the top, right under the download, the CSV. So right now you're seeing the Iowa, uh, oh, Iowa rate. That's okay. The Iowa information for the state for, and then you see the county map. So you're able to, it's just like buying something on Amazon. Um, you can select right above the map. You can select the year, you can select the month, um, and then it automatically will change the information. And then, so then we have the county map, which is probably what you're interested in. You'll see the initials SA, that means seasonally adjusted. So what that means is for the state is we know there's seasonality that comes that impacts employment, such as when school is shut down, or unfortunately we have winter. Um, but the data for the counties are not adjusted for those factors. So that's why it says not seasonally adjusted. This is the true data. This is really what happened with the employment and unemployment levels. So you'll see that this is a current map. You can select different things on the map. Yep, you can hover over it and see. Select the county and then near the bottom, right underneath the map, you'll see that it's gonna graph that for you. And you can change, on the left side, you can change it through employment. You can do labor force. You can do unemployment. Um, and then select your counties and your month and year. And then on the map, the map pops back up. There's some little things in the left-hand corner. The map, well, some little icons. Well, they went away. What's going on? Sorry, Donna, we were stuck in the spin cycle there for a second. Um, oh, okay. But I'm going to go back to the unemployment rate and um, are you going to there they go. Yep. You should be able so to. Can... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, hopefully you can see that where there's a lasso, a radius, a radial and a rectangle. Not... 
So you can select your area. You can draw your own custom area. That's what those tools are for. If you want to combine your own counties and create it that way, you can do that. But you can also, excuse me, select your counties um, on a drop down. Just click on them um, and then you click off of that, your selection. That one might, does that have apply on the bottom of it? Yes, it does. I don't know how far. Yeah, I'm yeah just like apply and then it will get your, the areas that you've chosen and they'll be on the bottom. So you can, it will show you um, combine that information for you into one unemployment, you wouldn't have to combine the information yourself if you had some counties you were interested in looking at and grouping those together. Yep. And then we have a little video. A few of our um, website pages have videos and this is one of them because it's highly used. So we did a brief video. If you want to hear that or if you get lost or like, what are they talking about? There you go. Uh, the video and will go through the, uh, of the, the functionality that we're working on right now too. So. And the shaded areas right below the map, those are the recession periods that have occurred. So we grade those in. Uh, we're still kind of sort of in a recession, so uh, we're not sure when it will end. So we may be extending that far. Hopefully not. And then on the bottom of the pages, these are Tableau key guides. Um, so there's different functions that we can do in Tableau. Of course, we can do some sorts, highest to lowest, lowest to highest. We can download the files. Um, you can create and share visualizations. Um, a lot of people do that to do reports. Um, so when you embed and embed the code, so when you do that, then if you embed it in a report, you don't have to, from the page, then that page when it updates, it automatically updates. So you won't have to go back and go, oh, when did the unemployment rate update? Now I got to update my little page that I've created to share. No, it does it for you automatically. And you can just also, to, um, go ahead. I was just gonna say, just to expand on that. So this share button is right located right here. And so uh, Donna mentioned the embed code or the, the link. You can copy this link and bookmark it and as donna said the the information will update um as you as we publish new data the link should update we have it at a couple instances where those links break but they hold um pretty consistently and i'm just going to paste in the the link that i copied from there so you can see what you'll um, get once you do that so it it maintains the same I'm not sure why the map isn't updating, but our data below is the data that we selected in the drop down list. And that information will update as we publish new data. And that way you don't have to go out and create these over and over. And um, yeah, you can also embed them on your websites as well. But I will hop back. Go ahead, Donna. Do we cover everything? Oh, no. Now you can print. Um, that's another function. Um, I think the PDF is the best one. Is that right, Ryan? That's correct. Yep, we do recommend using a yeah. PDF. And so it does give you multiple. The PDF is the most consistent um, formatted version. Which we're excited about because printing was used to be a very big issue, but now you can just print the page. The other thing people will do, they'll um, snap it, snap the page or snip the page, and you can do that, and that works really well too. And then if you go down a little bit further on the bottom, a lot of the pages will have on the left side, the related links and resources, how they are part of the federal system, your labor statistics system. Um, and so for your, that would be for this one. And then what are the annual average, seasonal justice and labor force demographics. And then on the right side, there is some more information. There's um, a county map, static county map that we publish. There's, if you want to know the schedule of when the data comes out, um, there's another public one-page publication, economic publication status of the workforce and the economy. 
area of substantial employment, um, that's part, I think, what we do for ETA where we look at and have to create um, areas that have a high percentage of unemployment consistently for a year. And then information about SLOUS. Um, if you're interested in learning more and area definitions, and then the contact information that Ryan had pointed out in the feedback form. Any questions on Laos page so far? Unemployment. Okay. Anything um, that so you want to add, Ryan? Yeah, so I, mine is uh, my comments are basically just uh, based around Tableau and the data tool in the middle. Um, so each I mentioned that each one of our pages, most of our pages are going to have this type of data tool. And um, things I want to point out is if you create something that you're not happy with or you, you would like to start over, there is an undo button down here, just like there is in Word or Excel or um, any, basically any other software. And then there's a reset button. If you just want to wipe the slate clean and start fresh, you can hit reset and the information, it'll go back to the original state. Um, we do want to point out that a lot of our, oh, our, yeah. our data tools have tabs across the top that basically provide either uh, different versions of the information or a different way to look at it. Uh, let's see. I think they'll here. be interested in, yeah, both next two. Yep, I'm gonna look at um, comparison. So. This one compares Iowa to the state, but this one will, um, this area comparison will allow you to compare uh, many different geographies, excuse me, to um, other geographies, right? So here is, um, Iowa is in the, the dark blue and here's the United States as a whole in the, the light blue. Um, but you can come over here and let's say I'm not interested in the United States and I'm interested in the county or I work, let's go to Iowa Workforce Region. And if we have uh, regional options on these, I'm going to try to use the same regions throughout the demonstration today. So uh, just for consistency, uh, let's hit East Central Iowa. So these are the new regions for the IWD region. We, all of our data has not gotten to that point yet, but this page with the unemployment, the labor force data does have that. And if you want to compare your local area to the state, we can click back the state back on. Um, and, or if you want to compare your local area to uh, other, the other local areas, we can hit, hit apply. And you can see it on the graph here, but you can also look below. Um, as of December, you can compare the local areas across the state. You can look at the labor force, the employment, uh, unemployment. So I thought I clicked state off, sorry about that. And then you could slide the bar on the right and it will move the month. Is that December what's showing down there? Yep. So, Either that way or on the bottom where you were in the data table. If you don't need 20 years worth of um, data, you can take a look just at uh, the last, uh, let's, I'll just stop here. And that'll help give you a little clearer picture. Um, Mississippi Valley is running the highest at the moment. Um, Northwest, which is at the lowest um, currently, which is not a surprise because the Northwest part of the state typically has the lowest unemployment rate. Um, Anyway, so these are some of the, the, we really want to give you control over the information you're seeing and, um, you know, uh, let you filter, create your own visualizations and. Um, Can you click on the local area one too before you leave that page? Uh, yeah. Uh, which one am I looking at? Local area. Are you, at the top. Go above. The, oh, I'm sorry. The, right the tab. Page. Yep. There we go. <laughs> yep. So you, okay. This yeah. So be... on this, you you can also um, just get your county information, choose your year, 
your month, um, and then you can view your data in this way too and have it appear on the, it should appear on the top and then on the map as well. So maybe just on the map. There it goes. This takes a second. So you can go back and see if you, I think one of the things that you needed to have was to look at historically trends and patterns, and this would give you that information because this is monthly data for whatever area that you select if you need to do that. Um, otherwise, the next tab would be the annual average. So if you just need to look at it on a, not a monthly basis, but it, perhaps just annually, what has happened in my counties or the areas you make or whatever uh, geography you choose, you can also do that. We get a big request for, well, what was the annual information? So you have those same factors, the labor force, which is the people employed and unemployed combined make up the labor force. And then you also have the unemployment rate. Mm. Uh, Donna, Don, can you correct me if I'm wrong? This will be part of the updates next week to the 2020. Is that is that true? Yes, the 2020 will be. We have to finish. We go back and we have a process that we go back and make sure we look at data for five years back and make sure if there are any corrections or anything of that nature, they are applied and then we bring it forward. And so then we will be having 2020 data along with any changes that we saw with the other figures for the previous five years. Thanks, Ryan. Sure. Uh, I, I will point out that all of our pages typically uh, do have an explanation of the data you're looking at and, um, and then tell you about the data tool below to help with that. Um, there is a link to the Tableau guide in each one of these, and it should help you. How do I print? How do I uh, use the filters? So if it doesn't stick with you after today, then um, it, there is that resource there. So close button. All right. All righty. Um, before we, oh, I did. I always forget to do this. Uh, we do recommend using Google yeah. Chrome as the browser. Um, it, it just reacts better with the way our, our website is set up and how the data tools um, are incorporated. So uh, we do recommend that. But Michelle, do we have any questions? I can't see the chat. So and so far. All right. Well, we've put everybody to sleep or we're doing a good job. I, somewhere in between. I don't know. But um, all right, let's see what's next on our trip. We do have quarterly census of employment and wages. All right, so this is going to be an industry uh, regarding it, the employers. And so I'm gonna hop over here to the um, industry tab and I'm gonna come down here to the quarterly census of employment and wages. And Donna, I'll let you drive again. All right. Um, so this one does have a FAQ page on it, but and just remember it's kind of the pages, most of the pages will be similar. So you can do one page, you can do most of them. Um, so what this does, what this program does, it collects on a quarterly basis employment and wage information by industries. So this would give you a look at what are the employment levels, what are the average wages for an industry. One thing that people sometimes forget about when you're trying to counsel somebody or, or give them some assistance about a career, some folks may know, I want to work in an industry. They might know their industry. I want to work in manufacturing. I might want to manufacture widgets, or I might want to manufacture food. I, I love that industry. So this is a way to look at some statistics from the aspect of where people work. So we, this program, unfortunately, is a delayed program because it's quarterly. So when the quarter ends, um, it would have ended in December, would have been the last one, then people get an additional month to provide us the data, which makes us the end of January. And then we have all the data has to be reviewed. So it's a delayed program, but it's a very good and strong program because about 95 to 97% of employees 
employers are included in this data with their employees. So they fall under the unemployment insurance laws. Those that are covered are in here would be things like um, self-paid workers and farmers, some agriculture workers are those that are missing um, from this data. So it's the majority. Um, sometimes we call it the universe of data. Um, we use it for a lot of other methods like drawing samples out of it and using it for other programs. So on this, what you're looking at is, once again, it's, it's pretty straightforward, employment and wages. So we have the uh, industry by the sectors and the subsectors. Um, the locations are how many businesses there are. Then we collect the employment for each month and we collect the wages for each month, but we don't have room for that. Um, so we have the average employment, there's each month of the quarter and then the employment as an average and then the weekly wage as an average. And con please consider we don't know how many hours, we're not allowed, allowed to ask how many hours are worked. So we're just taking that with a grain of salt with the wages, but it's the best information we can get. Um, so on the left, you can select your year, you can select your quarter, you can see fourth quarter is not there. We do know how to count fourth quarter is just not ready yet. So when fourth quarter comes available, I believe next month, uh, we'll be able to put that quarter on there as well. And sector, underneath that you'll see sector and subsector, that has to do to what the detailed level. So subsector would have more detailed, we call it three digits, and sector would be two digits. So you can get into more specific places. Like instead of just having manufacturing would be a sector, food, manu food manufacturing or apparel manufacturing would be a subsector. You get more detailed about that type, a type of industry. Let's see. And then, yep, we can, oh, there it is, yeah. And so then we show the map on the bottom or the graph on the bottom. It's very helpful. You can, yeah, select the county employment and wages as well. Um, just select your sector. Which one are you interested in? What county are you interested in? And then it populates right there in the middle. So if you select another county, yeah, Polk is just the default because we're in Polk County. We had to have one for this system. So we can, you can just select any county you choose. So sometimes you might forget to take off Polk like I do. And you're like, this looks weird, but it will tell you which counties you have selected in your information. And then it changes. There's Blackhawk County. And so you see that the numbers are very different. And it provides all of that same information. If something were to be missing, like on the bottom of that, you'll see mining, that all you see, if there's seven locations, there's nothing there on the other areas, that's because that information is suppressed. We're not able to reveal it, but there's not too many instances with that when that happens. Mining is a small industry in Iowa, and so that's why that's not unusual. That would be, other information would be suppressed. And then once again, the chart will change changes at the bottom too, and will reflect what you have at the top. So I'm just selecting multiple counties so that okay. you can see that it'll it'll aggregate or group those together as um, as needed. So you can select the counties in your local areas to um, so you can account for all of them as a as a whole. Um, you may not want to do that, but you may want to look at the, the local area altogether, or you might want to look at individual counties. But um, you can do both with this tool. And that's one of the features that we love because some other um, software, it, they just weren't able to do that. And so this just lets you customize your data more the way you want and that's the way that it's most helpful and beneficial for whatever program you're working on. Let's see. And then uh, let's go to another tab. Let's go to where are we at? Map. And so there you go. So your same data, 
that you can make your selection, your sectors, um, and then on the right um, of that little chart, yeah, let's check, do another one, education. Um, what do you want to do? Let's do education. We haven't seen that in a minute. And there it changed. And you'll see the county total employment and average weekly wages. And then if Brian were just like, like where that says total employment right there, it's uh, the little bars. It's going to up a little bit up, up. Yeah, the little bars, then it's going to um, reorganize your data. I should pop back up. Sometimes it takes a second. There's so many counties. There it goes. This just takes a second. So you can do some selections that way. And then your map then reflects whatever data that you selected as well. So you selected total employment, and then so then it organized it by largest to smallest. You can uh, select the three bars again and would do it the other way, do the inverse. Okay, so he just what he did is he just selected one county, and that's why it just popped up on the map in that way. And then he selected off of that, and so then you get all the information for all the counties for manufacturing the third quarter of 2020 because that's the selector that's the that's the selector you had chosen the sector and the industry of manufacturing in the third quarter for 2020. And you can go into deeper subsectors, but um, right. Mm -hmm. um, Donna, you've kind of touched on this, and I'll just reiterate: um, in our in our shop, um, we have to be very careful to not disclose any information related to one employer or one individual. And so, when you see um, you saw some counties that didn't have data earlier, um, that's because they didn't meet the threshold for us to be able to report. And so. Um, you will see that once in a while so that we're, we're protecting the identities of those employers and those individuals. Um, a lot of the did same thing. The other, below. Yep. Do the um, other tabs. I don't think we did all the tabs, did we? No, nope. quarterly course? analysis. Yeah. So that just is what it, I mean, we um, try to make the label so that you can understand what information going to be. So the descriptor is quarterly analysis on the tab. And so the information is quarterly. So you're seeing for each year the information for each of those quarters. And then you would just select your county, your sector, um, if you how detailed you want your sector. And um, it's just really straightforward. Like I said, once you learn to do a few of these, it's the same type of selection process. Uh, I'm going to select uh, accommodation and food services since um, oh, that sounds good. this um, will show us the pandemic uh, impact um, on this industry. And you can see here for uh, third quarter of 2019, they had 126, almost 127,000 people employed in that industry. Um, for the same quarter in 2020, uh, you know, about 20. 20,000, a little over 20,000 less uh, employees in 2020. Um, so and if you look at, and you can look at the table here and you can see how that's changed over time um, or because second quarter of 2020, uh, almost 40, the change was almost 43,000 employees across the state in that uh, accommodation food services industry. So, um, so that'd be a good place. Um, this would be a good tool for your analysis too, just depending on how you want to um, show your information to show the history of what's happened within an, um, an industry in your county or your local area. Yep, and you can select more than one county and like we did with the yep. previous data visits and um, see how that has changed for the, that group. 
We have one more uh, tab. Yeah, annual. So we get a request for this too. Um, just like with the previous page with the unemployment rate and such, people request annual information. So that's what this is. Maybe you just need your analysis on an annual basis. You don't need all the quarterly information. So here you go. Just pick your year, pick your industry, um, and yeah, there it goes. It's going to change. And then you can do some sorts um, as well. Oops, I sorted something that was pretty you... sorted. <laughs> yeah, Sorry how about, about that? <laughs> um, here we'll sort we'll sort by annual wage and as you can see Dallas County in healthcare has on average pays the highest in 2019. And then you got get a map right below to reflect the changes that you made. So once again, good tool. You can put it in your report. You can keep it in your briefcase. I'm not really sure what to do with it, but. Um, that's a good uses for this data. So once again, this is industry data, employment and wages, and that you can customize it. So that's the quarterly census of employment and wages. Any questions, Michelle? Yes, we just got one. Does this site have a list, PDF or CSV? of the sectors and subsectors available for download or reference. Could you say that again? Is there a the list, list of the sectors and subsectors that somebody can download yeah. to reference? Yeah. Yep. That's where it is. Right Under here the resource is a link. North America. Mm -hmm. <gasps> uh -oh. It's moved. We need to I update our link. <laughs> Wow. Well, oh, they kicked us what? to the new one too. So, yeah. Yep, here so is this the. Is, yeah. This is, it's a North America industry classification system. I, we always have all these long names. We call them NAICS. You can just call them industry codes. The good thing about this, every state, this is a federal classification system. So, every state uses the same classification for the same type of information. Or you can download the PDF here, which I'm guessing is about 400,000 pages. Um, yeah, it is. But it has a nice <laughs> index in it <laughs> to help you with that. Um, there, yeah. And I think I haven't been on the site that, that since it's changed. Yeah. But let's see you what happens. Click on one of those and it will, I think they will expand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all learning together. And they today. also provide definitions with them. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. No, I'm just saying we're we're learning as well on the new on the new uh, NAICS site. So, uh, so there is there is this um, tool. There's um, also a site that's fairly that I use once in a while just because it's it's quick. Is uh, let's see if I can find my. Ba -ba -ba -ba. We're getting a secret. Yeah, uh, NAICS.com. Right. So, N A. ICS.com forward slash search and and I can send this I, if I can put this in the chat you can actually um, I just put it in there Ryan what's that I just put it in there okay perfect thank you so um this is kind of uh, an easy way to, and you can click on these and it'll expand to more um, types of industries, gives you the code on the left. Uh, these are US numbers, so I don't typically use those, but um, I don't have every NAICS memorized. So as long as I can remember where to go find them, that's what I do, but. And what Ryan showed you, we only, um provide the data on the website and like two numbers, like 31 or three numbers, like 311. The site that he shows you and the NAICS um, manual, we can go up to six digits. However, when you do that, it gets very, very specific. And so sometimes we lose some of the data because we have factors that we have to suppress the data. But if you wanted to know 
um, what other kind of industries are within those sectors, that's a good way to learn that. Yeah. So I, I don't think there's anything else on that page. Is there? That answered the question. Thank you. Oh, there's more. Is there any more? Oh, I see. Is there chat? There's more questions. No more questions Michelle? in the chat. Nope. We're good. Oh. All right. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, next up on our list is uh, industry forecasts. So, let me... so what we showed you so far is what the employment level was in that period of time. So now we're going to look at taking those same industries um, and starting with a base year and then moving them forward. So what are we predicting is going to happen? in that industry and the industry and occupations are the only um, type of data that we made predictions on. I, there is population the population predictions provided by another organization, but this is the only um, predictions that we provide. So we, what we do is we take um, the base year and we are assigned what base year to use by Employment and Training Administration, ETA, and then we build that out for 10 years and a two-year cycle. So right now, our 10-year cycle is 2018 to 28. We'll be updating that, start working on the next cycle, which is 2020 to 30 next year. It's just a, a delay in how um, we are able to gather the data and then what the requirements are for us publishing the data. So unfortunately, when we go here, the 2018 to 28 data is on the old regions. It's on the old regions, people. So you'll have to like add your information up because it's going to be quite costly and time consuming when we were getting ready to work on some other things to make the new region. Yep, However, the short I was just to say some of these data structures are like driving a big ship, right? And you can't turn on a dime. It takes time to um, point them in the new direction. Right. But what Ryan's showing is the short-term ones, which are two years, and we do two-year projections every two, every year. Um, those are going to those are with the new region. So Ryan, could you go to select the geography, and you'll see. Yep. And there they are. So the when we're looking at the NAICS or the industry code, the three digits, they match what was on the QCW information, the quarterly information that we just looked at. So here again, we have, you can download us a CSV and Excel if you want for some reason. Um, the Excel files, do have different tabs on them that make it useful for you, which are pre, it's pre-sorted data. So do we want to sort by uh, the code? Do we want to, the next code? Do we want to sort by the employment? Can you open up one of those? Um, yeah, so for, well, that it's taking me a minute to download you. because I, I don't oh. need to take forever to download. So I'm going to start now and you can, um, oh, well, never mind. It doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, Probably because I asked you to do it. Sorry about that. No, but anyway, uh, you can do it yourself. It's an Excel file. It's very simple. You just download it. It will work. And um, it, it provides you sorts. And this is, an, I'm telling you this because you'll see another one with occupations, which is a, has even more detail. So, um, okay, Donna, I think I'm, I'm ready to share that screen so okay go ahead all right hopefully you see a excel spreadsheet now so there it is for the regions um you'll see there's tabs on the bottom rounded is you'll have rounded growth and percent sorts and then if you want to do something different you're welcome to do that and you just um say you want to enable the sheet and make your own sorts if you choose to so you have you can sort by any of those columns or use the ones that we've provided. And once again, you'll see some zeros because there's just not enough um, employment 
for us to divulge that in a safe manner. Yep. Apparel manufacturing, for example, in Region 10 does not have um, yeah. enough data to provide. So, all right, I'm gonna hop back over to the website again. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you're not seeing it. Yep, we see it. Um, I didn't explain the percent change that how fast or slow or the amount of change between the base year, we call it the projected year, the base year and the projected year. So how that's what when people say, oh, how is that a growing occupation? Well, let me sort that area or let me go to the spreadsheet and I can tell you if that industry is growing or if it's declining or if it's just no growth. So that's a, a good indicator for you. Now, one thing I would say and caution you about, you'll see some of these are really high um, growth rates. That looks okay. But then some of them have growth rates that are high and there's just really small employment. So it's 100% because it went from five to 10. So I would caution you to look at both of those factors, how the employment change and the numeric change, and they're right next to each other. So when you, um, this is like the other um, pages that we looked at that you'll get, also get a table on the bottom that will just uh, show you in the two digits, the very confined sectors, um, the employment information, uh, the growth, um, and those factors. So if you don't need the three digit, which is what's shown in the, on the top, this also will show you in a two digit. Maybe you don't want that level of detail. Let's see, and then, yep, go ahead. Or just just like the that. others you can, yeah. If you knew the uh, industry that you wanted, you can. Um, I, I have amusement gambling on the mind with all of the uh, sports betting app commercials I've seen. Yeah. Over, you know, yeah. three months. So I, th I think the employment's going to go way higher than that, Donna. But <laughs> just yeah, <kidding>. you never know. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> and then I forgot to mention. Um, that there's a little map of Iowa. And so what it's doing, you'll see it, the area is darkened. That's showing what area of the state that you're looking at too. Let's see what else is on here. Gonna reset. I think that's it for this page. Um, did you want me to highlight the long-term since I did just- Yeah, why don't you show them the long-term? It's really okay. this, very similar, but a longer span. And remember, the long term are the old regions. So you have to roll up the data for the. Might have hit a snag with the long term. Oh, shoot. Let's try a different uh, local workforce here. I wonder why that's doing that. Huh. Well, we'll get that. Uh, take, take a look at that, won't we? So. Yep. Can you just scroll down into the bottom? Since I've seen the short term, it's going to be just like that. And then once again, um, here's some additional information. One thing that we've created on the left are the industry profiles. Um, they're a little dated because it takes us a while to produce them and we have to get the data. So you could select an industry, but we only do these for statewide. And it just provides information and overall view of the industry Statewide, um, it will show the sector employment and there's a trend in there. Um, but because it's just statewide, we're just not able to, we're only able to do it statewide because it's a, there are a lot of work, but in case you needed an overview of what's happened to maybe match your local area, we could do that. Here's the employment, there's the wages, um, the breakout above for the sectors, the top occupations in the sector. And we'll show you how to get those. Um, and then your map with the 
employment and wages by county. And I think that's probably it for that one. Okay. Any questions about forecasting your industries? None in the chat. None in the chat. Okay, we're moving on then. All right. I believe next is so, occupational forecasts. Yep. And so what we do is we take the industry employment information as our base and we make occupational forecasts with that using a combination of what the employment was in that industry. So it's the same time frame as the industry forecast. And then we overlay staffing patterns that we get when we are collecting occupational wages and employment data. So basically the same process, your CSVs, your Excels um, for short term and long term. We have, we're working on the short term um, occupation projections. They should be ready in April. So we'll have the short term ones for 2020 to 2022 in the new regions. So the rest of the information here is um, the old regions. The thing about this, that the Excel sheet um, in the long term, it has, it's just packed with information. So the short term projections, I mean, I'm sorry, the occupational projections will give you the details about, oh, here's an, let's see, can we open up one, do you think? We'll give it a try. Maybe. I'll uh, start the download now and then we can, check, we can check back at lunch. I probably might have it downloaded by then. No, do, um, <laughs> no, a long-term one. Oh, well. well yeah. Here, we'll go back. Long-term. Um, just as we're talking about this, unless you are a heavy data user, uh, typically we recommend using the Excel format uh, if you're not familiar with the differences. Um, the Excel format will have, will have better formatting and, um, you know, maintain colors and sorts and things where the CSVs, um, they're just, it's, it's more of a functional data set as far as you just get the numbers basically in the categories. So the, uh, we do recommend that, yeah. did it, did it go? Well, that was okay. much quicker. I'm not sure. All right. Let's me, let me hop yeah. over to the new. All right, you should see the... There it is. Um, so this is for, like I said, the old region, somewhat similar to the industry projections, but way more information. So you'll on the left, you'll see a stock. That's the kind you put on your foot. It's the standard occupational classification code. So once again, this is a federal system. All states use it. Um, so each occupation has a distinct code. Then you'll see a title. Um, what was employment in 2018? What we're projecting to be the employment, the change. And here we go over to the growth. So was is it a growth occupation? Is it a high demand occupation? Um, that would be that column. Um, and then there's been some additional factors that we add have added to the forecast or exits. Well, how many people are leaving that occupation? How many people are transferring to a different occupation? How much new growth, like if a business expanded or a new business came into town, um, we're projecting how many growth for that particular occupation. And then the total. So of all those, A, B, and C, add it together. Exits, transfers, and new growth, which we just call those total, total annual openings. And then, um, did you want to say something, Ryan? Oh, oh I thought you said what's up. I'm sorry. No, I'm just interrupting me. You know better. So um, then we, what we added, that's the projection part. So what we did, then we added the wages because, because we collect wage data, and it's just easier to put everything in one place for you to look 15 different places. So we have wage data, hourly and annual wage data at various wage levels. And we'll show you where the definitions are for those so you don't have to have them memorized. 
Um, you'll have to, I can see that there's just some numbers. All you have to do is click on the columns and expand it. So the numbers will go away, but it's just a space issue. And then what kind of, in the career preparation, what type of education is required? We're using a national system for this, except for the nurses. We try to use what's required for the state. So is a BA would be bachelor's, there's a master's, there's high school, less than high school. Is there work experience required for that occupation? Um, is there job training required? Um, we have all that and we're going to show you where that is in a minute, um, how you decipher what that means. And then next to that, you'll have um, skills. So we try to list the top skills from, okay, ONEX. And we've coded those in a manner that you can, you'll be able to recognize those in the bottom. The other thing that's on this is that we total each sector um, for the, we call them Mine's will come for the occupations like management occupations. So here's uh, the totals when we look at them for each kind of grouping is what these are more called um, for the occupations. Now they may not mat add up because we have to uh, we have the suppression if things don't make the cut or there there's not enough information available we don't publish it. But um, and we round everything to the nearest five to make it more detailed. So we try to publish as much information as we can. And so you can see all the detail. Now, when you go to the very bottom of this page, wait a minute, no, I'm sorry, we moved it on the, yeah, in the notes, there's where you get all the information about, well, what does the, the skills mean? What does the education level mean? So all that is handy dandy right there. I usually just print that page and keep it handy. So if I'm looking at this, I'll I'll know what's what. Um, also down there where Ryan grabbed the notes, there are um, pre-made sorts. So if you want to have a sort, if you want to know by the growth rate or the exit or how many total openings, those are already all provided for you. So it's a great way to look at work that's already completed and you don't have to do it. We were getting so many requests for it. I'm like, look, we should just do this. Um, I know you'll see the highlighted ones. They're dark, the bolded ones, excuse me. Those are just the totals, so you can just ignore those. We probably should change how we're formatting that. But otherwise, there you have it. Thanks, Brian. I know that's a, it's a huge worksheet. Mm -hmm. But we have that for each, each of the workforce development old regions at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to hop back. If you're ready for me to hop back to the website, we're, I'll do that now. We're ready. All right. Hold on to your seats. Okay. You're a good driver so far. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says about you. We've um, got 45 minutes left, so. Okay. I can screw it up at any moment. Okay. I think this is my last. Oh, uh, okay, so this is, um, we're still on occupational projections. And what this shows are, um, you do your selection here of your area and what occupation that you want. The thing that this is used for most is somebody is interested in a particular occupation and it's going to provide all the information for the occupation in a nice little snippet. Okay. Then, um, Don, I would just add to that that um, this is actually uh, a visualization of, that we added um, because before the pandemic, we were going out to the local offices and doing training and a lot of staff, um, when they work with individuals, they were telling us that they don't need a full list or they just want to be able to look at an, a, a particular occupation or a couple of occupations to compare those and see how the wages compare. So as you can see here, like for registered uh, nurses in um, Cedar Rapids, Iowa City area, they make, um, well, across the board, um, more money per hour than all occupations together. So it's above above that level. So um, just, wa just wanted to point out that's something that we did add based upon feedback and um, from the local offices. Go ahead, Donna. Okay. And then just go to, we'll just go through the tabs real quick, occupational comparison. 
go. There it goes. So you can just select, once again, select the information that you want, um, short term, long term. Uh, what do you want a detailed occupation or just a major group like management? And then the information, whatever you select, will appear in the table below. And then there's also a scattered plot that's going to show you um, not only the wages, but it's showing you the education level on those scatter plots for those for those occupations. And okay. and you, yeah, there you go. Hover over them and it's going to show you which one you're looking at. Okay, let's go on to let's go. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Donna, this is a, a good uh, the one uh, example. So our you can type in a search into the occupation to try to find the occupation if you're looking for a specific one. Um, we do caution against being too specific. Uh, the tool isn't as good as Google. I can't type in anything and have it say, did you mean um, whatever. Uh, it, so if I'll give an example of, if I type in nursing, I get two options of nursing assistant and nursing instructor. But if I'm more generic and I just start the word with nurse, then I do, it does catch um, more of those generic occupation. Uh, the umbrella, I guess, gets wider or the net gets wider as far as the occupations that it finds. So um, something to keep in mind if you're having a hard time with the search, if you can be, um, find that sweet, so sweet spot between being specific enough that it's not eliminating your items, but also generic enough that it's not um, I'm sorry, generic enough that's eliminating your items, but not specific enough that you're you're not getting anything. So, um, all right, I'll go to okay. the next step. All right. So let's just, yep, you're on long term. Let's select geography or type or see if we can bring something up and hit apply. And then there's your information. You're, this is just information that you're seeing, would see in the spreadsheet. If you just wanna look at it without opening the spreadsheet, it's all there. Well, most of it's there, I shouldn't say it's all there. All the wages are not available. And then you can do your, select if you want to do it sorted by growth or openings or whatever you choose. You can do it from that as well. Okay, and let's yep. go to- Donna, do you wanna to touch on the, um, this is a similar situation looking at growth versus openings. Um, what do you mean? You know, just because it has high, so just because something- Oh has, yeah, it's just- has high growth yeah. rate doesn't mean it actually employs that many people, for, right? Right, so you should look at both the growth rate and the opening. Right. Because that growth rate was 2.4% and 1,510 openings. But um, then the next one is, look at the third one. The third one is point, cashiers is 0.2% growth rate, but it has a really large number of openings. So you want to look at both of those factors. Perfect. Yep. Uh, let's see if I can get that back and show you the the other version of that will find an occupation that has really high growth rate, but doesn't employ, uh, have that many openings. Yeah. So, yeah, at the top, occupational therapy assistance. It's mm -hmm. growing rapidly, um, but only has 10 openings. Um, I like the analogy of thinking of a, a toddler. Um, if a toddler grows uh, an inch, it's a very high percentage for that, that toddler. But if I grow an inch, um, it the percentage growth is much smaller because I'm a bigger body, right? Um, so that's kind of how to think of that. Let's see. Let's go to that. Just show them the other tabs real quick because we want to get make sure we get to your stuff. Um, sure. Openings by type. Mm -hmm. so, there it goes. So it gives you a nice little chart and it's showing um, those three levels of growth exits and transfers for each of the occupations for the area that you have selected if you want a different view of it. 
and then occupation can go to the next tab. Um, yeah, are the requirements for those occupations. So you could sort the, if you wanted to use this page, you could sort it on this page. If your occupation um, required a certain level of education or experience, which you're looking for for your folks and apply that search, and then you're gonna get that, receive that information. And then it's gonna show the top skills, lay them out right below that. So I just did a search, uh, looked at a specific occupation, but I'm gonna reset and look at all and do what, uh, do the filters like you just described, Donna. Yep. Education level, we so go. we'll hit associate degree, we'll hit apply. And let's say less than five years gives me two occupations based upon those filters. So, yep. And then just go, we're just going to scroll down to the bottom and touch, show them that, yep, there's, there's the skill. Then keep going. Um, because this has a coding system too, and it's on the left, on the bottom, the standard occupational classification system. That's what where it says SOC, just like we had for the industry. Here's your um, dictionary for those definitions. So you can just look there. You can always, um, the new, yeah, always go to the latest version because when things change, you will be confused like, oh, it's missing, it's not there. And um, it's very helpful. I will want to do want to tell you, I don't know if you guys use ONET. So the SOC is very, very similar to ONET. The SOC has, let's see, six digits and the ONET will have eight. So if you cut off the last two from the ONET, it would be very, very similar to the SOC definition. If you were familiar with using that, yeah. And the SOC, the good thing about, I'm sorry, the ONET is that you can, they have more common terms for workers. So you could look that, look those up there and just look at the first six digits and see how that would relate to SOC. See, yeah, right there. Okay. I think that's all we have for the projections. Um, oh, I was just going to tell you the projection summary. That is also by um, the old regions, and it just already has a document that shows fastest growing occupations, slowest growing occupations, things of that nature. Pretty simple report that we were getting that a lot until we just created that. Any questions about occupations? Forecasting so far, Michelle? Nope, no questions. Okay, let's go to occupational wages. Oops. So we're to occupations and wages and employment. Employment. Mm -hmm. And we go to the Iowa wage report. It has the most current wage information um it's the best source there's another one but this has the most current because we're applying a, a index to the wages that we are actually collecting from employers in iowa so that's the only way we can get it um once again it we have a faq there's a tutorial because this is a widely used page csvs in excel format um and then if you want to do it's mostly like the projections you can get a little display of a specific occupation and all and the wage levels as well as their total employment so you have that there it's a great tool if you're just looking at one occupation you can select your area you can select an occupation um then you can also do yep yeah. And they pop right up, usually pretty fast. 
Um, and then at the top, you can do your area comparison. Sorry, I clicked one that didn't have data, that didn't have enough for animal no. computers, so. Yeah, <laughs> there's probably not that many. <laughs> <laughs> you can do your comparison that's near the top of the, you can look at areas or you can cross occupation comparison. I'll just show you one for time's sakes, where you select your area. Um, once again, these are the old IWD regions. and it's gonna pop up your data. You wanna look at a particular type of group. You may not know the occupation, might know when you see it, you can just look at the group and it's gonna filter in all those occupations with their wage levels um, that would fall underneath that major category of production occupation. Okay. Um, let's scroll down to the bottom and see if there's any tools down there that they need to be aware of. Uh, Oh, the area definitions and wage definitions. Because um, we have what's called, we call them BOS, balance of state areas. And that is defining exactly what those areas are for you. So you don't have to memorize them. There's a, there's that. And then there's a page that actually, second page will list out the county. If you scroll, yeah, scroll down on that. And what was the other? Yeah, there it goes down there. And there is one other document on that page. Can you go back to the bottom of the page? That was the uh, bottom of this page. There's no, no, the bottom of the page on the website. There was oh, another the web document. page. I'm yeah, sorry. Right yep. there. Oh, sorry. Web definitions. Web definition. Yeah. So you'll know when it when the wages are listed in the columns, and it will have those titles. So we know exactly what those wages mean. So you don't have to memorize anything. And Donna, just as a question, um, the team will be working on um, incorporating the new local workforce areas um, with this as well moving forward, right? Incorporating? The, the new local workforce areas. Uh, I think yeah, the, the, yeah, the, yep, yep. yeah. The first thing that will be released for the occupations will be the short term and the new uh, areas, which would be 20 to 22. Those will be released in April. Yep. Okay. State and their regions. And then next year we'll be working on that, the tenure for the industries and the occupations in the new areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing is the staffing patterns that we have. All right, so and then, this, this page can actually be found under either one of these um, topics because it is the connection between the two, All right? Um, so I'll hit staffing mm -hmm. patterns. Oh, you want me to... I <laughs> no, I was, just I was just want to point out that you can find it on both um, because they, yeah. yep. So you no, go ahead, please. You can go ahead. Then you can just transition into your own. Okay. So um, the occupations and um, the staffing patterns that Donna's talking about is uh, the team looks at what occupations are are found in what industry or what uh, uh, what occup where you can find um, and well I'll show you it's easier easier to uh, are you sure you want me to do this occupations in <laughs> industries or the industries so if, you're, uh, if you're in let's say it like this if there's an occupation the person is in is interested in we can tell you the industries they can become employed in. If they're in, interested in an industry like manufacturing, we can tell you what kind of jobs are there. How's that? That was much better than what I, I was coming Hard. up with. So, um, we get stuck in spin cycle here. So, what I've done is I've selected um, the two industry, two digit industry. Again, three gives you more detail. Um, I selected manufacturing, and so these are the jobs, um, the occupations that are found in manufacturing. 
assemblers and fabricators, uh, supervisors of production, production workers overall, welders, laborers, uh, meat packers. And if you scroll down below, you can see the, the table as well. So you can see what percentage of employment of this occupation can be found in manufacturing. So um, assemblers and fabricators, about 17, almost 18,000 estimated. 8% um, employment in the industry. So assemblers and fabricators make up um, the largest chunk, almost one out of 10 employees in that industry as an assembler or fabricator. Uh, this is yeah really helpful when you're trying to see what, uh, what industries occupations are found in. Um, sometimes you're surprised that Example, the nursing can be found in many different um, industries. And so I'm going to hop over to industries by occupation. So if you have an individual who's interested in becoming a registered nurse, um, I'm going to select the detailed occupation. Sometimes that these data tools, when they have a lot of data on the backside, um, it does take a minute for them to load. So if you, sometimes you have to be patient. I'm gonna do the search where we just talked about nurse and I'm not gonna be too specific. I'm gonna hit registered nurses. And we wait. There's a so, lot of nurses. <laughs> we're, we're going to see, uh, yeah, we're going to see your, your, what you think of nursing, uh, nurses working in which industry. You're, you're going to see the typical thought there, but you're also going to see some that uh, may surprise you. So again, not surprising, hospitality, uh, hospitals, I'm sorry, and ambulatory healthcare services. These are clinics, health clinics, uh -huh. and then we have long-term uh, care facilities, residential facilities. Those are, but you also have, you know, here's uh, nurses that are working in schools, working for the, the federal government, local governments, uh, administrative support service industry, insurance carriers and related um, activities. So sometimes we have nurses I know working in um, those managed care organizations, social assistance, uh, working for religious entities, also in food manufacturing. Sometimes um, people are surprised that manufacturers do have uh, nurses on staff uh, to assist. And so, um, again, this really allows you to look at um, what industries and occupation can be found in. And um, we'll just do one more. Welders and cutters, are probably going to be manufacturing and construction. But we'll see what else. I do want to point out that um, we do default to the top 20 industries because um, the, the more we, options we give you, the more data that has to load, the longer it takes. And we thought that 20 would probably meet people's needs. But if you need more, you can expand it by using this slider and it will provide more, um, more industries. Again, not surprising me for welders, machinery manufacturing, fabricated metal production, uh, transportation equipment manufacturing. So, and you can come down and look at the uh, percent estimated by occupation. So, uh, yeah, that's a real quick look at staffing patterns. A lot of the same, um, it was more information about staffing patterns from the um, Bureau of Labor Statistics, and um, also those standard occupational code definitions if you need those, just like on the last page. All right, let me see. What do we have next on the plan, Donna? I think it's labor shed. Steady. You are right, you are right. All right, so this is my turn to um, show off our, our products um, or my, our bureau. Um, we, we in our bureau don't necessarily do the same type of reporting or work with BLS and uh, the Employment Training Administration like Donna's team does. Um, we get to do some custom research and we, we use the, 
the data that Donna's team produces a lot in that work. But um, labor shed studies is one that's uh, really unique to our state. And so if you go over here to research and we hit labor shed studies, about 20 years ago, um, the state was up, um, had historic unemployment and uh, economic developers, community leaders wanted to know how economic development can happen um, if there isn't available labor. And so the University of Northern Iowa developed the labor shed study, uh, which is a labor supply study um, based upon commuting patterns into a given community. So um, it doesn't look at political boundaries like counties or uh, local workforce areas or even state boundaries. It is based upon commuting patterns of workers into a community. So that's the first step is we, we collect information from employers, say in uh, Pella, and we ask them the zip codes of the, their employees, and then we aggregate those together and we um, come up with a map, a footprint of where they draw their, their labor supply from. And I'm gonna scroll down to the, just to give you a sense of the, what that map looks like. So right now it defaults to Albia because we're in alphabetical order, but if I hit, Type in Pella. We will show the commuting pattern for uh, Pella, Iowa, based upon data that we received from Pella employers. And the next step in, in the labor study, we look at the number of people who are living in that geographic area um, between the ages of 18 and 64, prime working years. Um, we do know that. Uh, people work before 18 and after 64, but uh, we do see a, a big drop off in labor force participation after the age of 64. Um, people do, do retire. Um, and then we give an estimate of the total adjusted labor force for this area. Uh, again, not based upon county, but based upon that commuting area. Once that has been determined, we do surveying of individuals 18 to 64 in a community, in the, the labor shed area. And we ask them all kinds of questions about their, their current employment. Are they employed, unemployed, a homemaker, or are they retired? Uh, what industry do they work in? What, uh, what's their occupation? How much do they earn? And what job, if, if they're looking for a, a new job, what um, method are they using? Are they using the internet? Are they networking through family and friends? Are they using the newspaper? And so I'm going to click Pella again, just as an example. Now let's type it in that one a little quicker. Hey Ryan, there's a question about the distance. How many miles for a commuting area? Um, it really depends upon the community and the employers in that community. Um, if it's a metro, it's much larger. And I can show that in just a second. But... If, it's, if a community is on a four lane highway or interstate, um, that really stretches out the size of the labor shed area, really extends it because um, if people can jump in their car and drive, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour, or listen to their podcast or whatever it is they listen to, they don't mind sitting in the car for that long. Um, let me go back to the commuting pattern here, the labor shed area. So I'm, I'm gonna show you, there's Albia, you know, it's typically for a smaller community, it's the community, that, the county the community is in and the surrounding counties. But you do have instances where, um, I'm gonna go the other end. Albia is a very small uh, community. We're gonna go to Des Moines and you can see at how large the labor shit area is for Des Moines. Um, it, it is, a, you know, big chunk of central Iowa stretching down to the Missouri border. Um, not all the way to Omaha, but it, it's getting there and uh, up north to uh, Belmond and um, out east to almost just past Grinnell into Belle Plaine and Victor, Iowa. Um, we can select another one. We'll look at uh, kind of a medium sized community. Look at Manchester, Iowa over in Northeast. I would see it stretches Highway 20, for example, as I was mentioning, runs right past uh, Manchester. 
and see how it stretches the labor shed area east to west much further. Mm. Um, Ryan, this is Jim Irwin. I want to say I was on a, a, a meeting for this labor shed one other time when I was I'm with the uh, Highway 30, Portland Highway 30 Commission. And um, I want to say that they said that, that a four lane highway extends that labor shed 30, uh, they figure 30 minutes because somebody will drive 30 minutes further if they know they can get on a four lane. So, so you're extending at about roughly 30 miles either direction from wherever you're trying to find a labor shed because you have a four lane highway. It, it does make a big difference. And um, when we do talk about these things, I, I, I don't know if we're getting too of the weeds, but um, it's, people tend to forget that it is a double-edged sword, right? Because if people can drive to your community much quicker, make it more accessible, they can also drive out of your community and your labor force can go with it, right? So there's, um, th there's two sides of that coin, but um, it does, it definitely makes a difference. Uh, one reason we do we do the labor shed study because it, it truly it it uh, documents the size of the labor force, uh, the estimated labor force for a community, and also um, you know the this not just the size geographically but the size in terms of people because um, look at Manchester here they do have access um, they do show people commuting from Cedar Rapids and that makes a big difference for that community. Um, and Dubuque, right? Yeah, it has Manchester's in the middle of Dubuque, Waterloo, Cedar Falls, Cedar Rapids, and so it does have access to um, more labor than if it, it wasn't next to these these metro areas. Uh, we've got about 18 minutes. So I want to make sure that I get through my thing. But the takeaway from this is that the labor shed study is a labor supply study. It's looking at uh, we try to estimate the number of people available um, by in that commuting area. So um, here's a real quick look at um, Albia. And so we estimate there's about 12, almost 13,000 people in this labor shed area who would be um, likely or somewhat likely to accept employment in Albia. And then you see the different breakouts or estimates for the other groups. Um, we do look at benefits, wages, educational levels, um, and then we, Donna's team is uh, nice enough to, to provide us with those occupational wages that we looked at earlier. Um, we request the, those based upon the commuting pattern um, from Donna from the Iowa Wage Report and her team does a great job of um, helping us out there so we can provide those occupational wages based upon those commuting patterns as well. For, that way you're getting a real uh, sense of the the wages being paid for the for the labor the documented labor supplier at the labor market area. Um, one more quick thing here: we do have interactive reports that um, you can use. Oops, so it loads up here. The labor shed study that it's kind of we call it a storybook. It, it, it provides you with chapters and more detail about the the labor market area. So I just picked on. Carol here um, gives you information about here's the Carol labor market area, um, gives you idea on miles, 67 miles north and south. Um, you can look at competing labor market areas. So Carol competes with Harlan and Perry and Fort Dodge for the same labor in here. Um, more commuting data, demographics, uh, likeliness to change, education levels. All that's in here. So, but for the sake of time, I'm going to not hop into these, but uh, please feel free to do so. Or if you get in there to just can't find something, let us know. The, um, we've had some issues with our software and we're repairing those. So if you get to a community that uh, you can't get the information to load, just reach out and we'll, we'll prioritize it, be um, repaired. Right now the team's going through and repairing as much as we can, as fast as we can. Hey Ryan, I know you want to move on. So one quick question. Has there been given any thought or work done uh, to how working from home or remote work is going to impact these labor shed studies with this historical data being based on more traditional commuting patterns? So these commuting patterns are updated every two years. Um, obviously, we haven't started to collect the new um, 
data for all the areas that would show some of this work from home. Uh, some of it's going to be dictated about how much of this work from home is permanent, um, how many companies are going to be and organizations are going to be open to that. And I don't think we know the answer. Um, we know you hear Google and Facebook are going to do that, but how, how are all these other employers going to be doing so? It should be reflected in the, in the data that we get from employers in the community, but we have also added uh, a survey question in our labor shed survey when we're serving people in their homes and on the, their, their phones um, about where they permanently or where they spend most of their time um, working because we anticipate that even if th there's, there's going to be a mix, um, I believe, of people who are, gonna, are able to work at home full time um, like they have been for the last year. There's going to be a mix of people who are doing some type of hybrid version of um, they go to the office for a couple of days a week or, you know, some combination of that. And then people who are going to go right back to where they were uh, pre-March 2020. So we're trying to collect data on it. I don't know what the answer is going to be yet. I, that's not a great answer. So um, but hope it, it is on our minds, right? I mean, it, it, how much of the, the changes are going to stick after we hopefully get back to a, a more normal um, uh, pre-2020 uh, levels. Uh, any other questions on labor shed area? We're a little behind schedule if you hear that from, uh, from economic developers, just to do the, the difficulties collecting data um, during the pandemic. And so we're, we're playing catch up right now and we hope to do, do so fairly quickly, but um, we are behind. Um, next up on my slide. College student retention. College student retention. I'm gonna speed this up so that we respect everybody's time. The College student retention is a um, survey we do of uh, college students, asking them about where they're going to work and live after they graduate. And we did this in 2017. We do it about every five years so that um, we have a new batch of students. And what you can do is you can look at, um, we ask them about how important quality of life is, entertainment options, finances, and then you can look at certain age groups, you can look at gender, race, and the occupational types. And so you can see how their views of Iowa compare to what they value when they're going to determine where they're going to work and live after graduation. Um, we have future employment uh, expected wages that they think, and you can search by occupational groups. So you can um, look at computer uh, occupations, those who expect to work in that field what they expect their earnings to be after graduation. I can tell you that I would be highly surprised if uh, many of them reached that expectation, but if they did, uh, congratulations to them. Um, and then also uh, we looked at the motivators. What motivated these individuals to go into the groups that they did, the occupations they did or the studies that they did and how important wages are compared to benefits and the combination of those. So there's a lot of information here. Um, this is about a, a survey that we did regarding um, brain drain, trying to understand more of what individuals are, are thinking when they decide to, um, where they're gonna work and where they're gonna live after graduation. Um, I think we've got the uh, worker adjustment and training. Adjustment train, mm -hmm. born, yeah. born notice. I don't know how many people are familiar with the WARN notice in this group, but I'm going to touch on it real quick here. So this isn't on the LMI site. It's If you just Google it, it's on the IWD site, but if you just Google uh, WARN notice Iowa, it should pop up at the top of the list. Um, if there's a large layoff in the state, there is a, uh, it's required that the employer notify Iowa workforce development. Uh, I'm sure many of you know this already. Um, but we do have a tool here that allows us to, you can filter by company or you can filter by city or county to see where there's been large dislocations. Um, I do relay this to businesses and economic developers who are having a hard time finding uh, employees in their areas because this represents a, a fresh um, pool of labor that may be available and willing to commute or move to your area. 
Um, there, I think we have data back to 2000. Yeah, we do this that back to 2016, but the default is within the, the current year. Um, it gives you the expected number of employees who are impacted, uh, the company name, location. So that was really quick, but it, it is a, a, a way to look at possible available labor. Um, I think workforce needs is next on the list. Over in research, we have workforce needs assessment. This is a survey of employers asking them about their current vacancies, their, their expected retirement, their perceptions for receiving. Um, it is a little bit uh, 19. Breaking up. We may have lost Ryan. It sounds like we might have. Do you remember um, what else that we, I can probably, I can talk about Warren real quick. I'm not sure how the website works exactly, but um, there's- Workforce veterans. needs assessment. He already did Warren, honey. Oh, he did Warren. Okay, never mind. Workforce uh -oh. needs, oh, is he coming back? If not, I can, wait a minute. I must have lost him. See, is there much left, Donna? No, he only had, um, he, do, he did, he was on workforce needs assessment. Um, maybe I'll just tell you about it, not try to share the screen. Do you think that's okay? Yeah. Okay, so what that does, it's a sur that is also a survey of employers and it details um, by the various geographies, what um, information that perhaps like the applicant is possessing or missing, such as they might have a need for basic skills. Um, what are, what type of skills, excuse me, what type of skills the applicants are lacking that the employers are reporting. So that kind of gives you a look at what their needs are. They need more employers in this situation, or in this industry, or in this area um, that possess these various types of skills. And then also tells you where the employers are looking for uh, workers. Where are they advertising? Um, is, are they going on the internet? Are they going on social media? And then what type of difficulties are they experiencing in filling positions and what is the difficulty specifically? Oh, he's there. There you go. I was talking about your workforce needs assessment. Do you want to share that page, Ryan? Yep. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. The internet decided to go to lunch early. So, um, yeah, I'll hop back to the workforce needs assessment. Thanks, Donna, for picking me up. Um, as I mentioned, the survey is of employers regarding, I don't know where I got cut off, actually, uh, ret uh, vacancies, retirements, and the, um, uh, the perception of the, their applicant skills as far as uh, basic, um, hard, soft, or just all skills overall. Um, but the takeaway from here is the first tab is a, a, the state as a whole, but you can look at uh, local workforce areas. And I'm running off my cell phone, so it may be a little slower. The quality may not be as, as good as it was before. Um, but you you can select your select your area. Um, I'll just pick trying to stick with a common Cedar Rapids area. So you can look at it overall. Um, applicants possess basic skills, hard skills. If those if they are lacking skills. Here are the skills that they're telling us they're lacking. And this is all industries, um, you know, top soft skill was motivation. Um, top um, hard skill was critical thinking. 
And so uh, basic skills, written communication was the, the top one. Uh, we also have information on efforts to retain eligible retirees, flexible schedules typically is one of the higher ones, um, or um, change the duties slightly so that they're retaining that knowledge from those experienced individuals. Um, and then um, strategies to, to replace those, those groups. Um, again, that's the workforce needs. There is local info. You can sort by industry. I feel like I'm rushing on everyone here, but I want to keep us on schedule. So I'm going to jump real quick to the um, employee benefit analysis. So in the same survey, we ask uh, employers about the benefits they offer their employees. We break those categories down into uh, health benefits, so health insurance coverages, uh, paid leave, so things like uh, vacation, paid sick, paid time off, bereavement, maternity, how many of them offer that to their, their, full, their employees. And then we have additional ben benefits or those bonuses, uh, relocation, moving expenses, tuition assistance, uh, wellness programs, those types of things. Um, those are also available um, for the local workforce areas. Again, these are not updated yet to the uh, most current uh, workforce areas, but uh, we will in the next in the next version of this be be updating. Um, I don't think this probably hits too much on what your local plans need, but I did want to make sure that you knew that those were available. Um, Donna, what do I have next on my... Uh, oh, demographic. Def, demographic. Demographic. And that would be the last section. That would be last one. Okay. So I do know that um, you need, for your planning, you need to look at your local demographics. And this isn't something that Iowa Workforce Development produces. This is something uh, we use get census data for, but we get requested requests for it all the time. So we decided to add it to our site. <clears throat> we, we, we sourced it so that census doesn't think we're taking uh, credit for all of their work. But over here on the resources tab, if you hit labor force demographics, you'll come to this page and we have a tool that lets you look at the labor force information by certain groups. You can look at age, gender, race, ethnicity, education levels, um, disability, veteran status, poverty status, and the females with female with children. Um, these are all categories uh, produced by the census. You can look at specific counties, um, metros, and micropolitans. Uh, we also have uh, the breakouts between one year and five year estimates. And so one year, the newest is 2019 data. And that's the, was published out in October, I believe, might've been the end of September. Mm -hmm. And then we also have five year estimates, which looks at five years worth of data. So it, it, it has more data so they can do more reporting and have less um, margins of error. Um, the less data you have, the, the less confident you are in those numbers. So if you're gonna be using the county uh, data, I highly recommend using uh, five-year estimates so that you can have more confidence in the numbers that uh, you're being provided by census. So you just click the little checkbox and then you can come over here and select your, your county or multiple counties. I'll just hit three C counties in a row that make absolutely no sense other than they start with the letter C. Um, and so then it, it will publish these for you. And you can look at the total population by age group uh, on, on this tab, the labor force participation. Here's an example of uh, the drop I mentioned after the age of 64, you do see quite a bit of uh, drop in the labor force participation for people 65 and older. Um, and then lastly, here's the unemployment rate for these groups by age. You can do the same thing um, for Brian, is this data by area or only individual county level? Uh, county. This is only by county level because that's uh, census doesn't produce information um, right. okay. for Iowa's local workforce areas. So that you would sense. have to do some combination um, of counties for your local area. What I would caution against is we, we tried to actually do the local workforce areas, but we couldn't get the... Um, margin of error calculations done correctly because you're combining uh, 
say multiple rural counties and um, we wanted to we didn't want to misrepresent that information so we decided to stick with what census has uh, is providing if that makes sense yep thank you uh, yep and i know a I uh, believe race and disability are a couple of items that um, the groups need to look at. So again, it's the same same information here. We're looking at the state as a whole, and you can see that like for those individuals with disabilities, 20 to, six, 20 to 64 years of age have a much higher unemployment rate than the population as a whole or um, other groups. So um, I'm at 12 o'clock, Michelle. So. I think that's that's a really quick overview of the demographics. It's there. I'm, we're happy to answer questions. Um, yeah, I think, thank you guys very much. And, and I will tell you, um, all of you that are listening from the local areas who need this data, uh, while Donna and Ryan were mostly on the websites actually showing you the data, the PowerPoint presentation that they put together does a great job of having a slide or two for each one of these areas, really you know, circling and pointing out where you can be selecting different options, what selections you might wanna make. So that's gonna be a really good resource for you as well. So we'll, again, I'll be posting the, the actual PowerPoint and this recording, hopefully early next week on the local board website where the other local planning documents are posted. And the other thing that we are going to do for you, um, not we, the local, the labor market information team is going to go ahead and gather up some of this data that you will need for your local plans and make that available to you. So you can obviously use the websites to do your own research and, and gather your own data and, and, and do your own analysis from that. But then we will also make some of that available to you to use for your analysis in your local plans. And our goal is to hopefully have that available to you by April 9th. So I'll communicate that out to the staff, to the board and the local board. So you'll have that information and you can kind of get, get moving because this really is the first piece and the, and the foundation that you need to be able to write the rest of your local plan. So the only other sort of next step that I would remind everybody about is that the next training that we plan to offer will be on training on how to actually submit the local plan using the iowagrants.gov website. We won't be doing that training until uh, July 15th, just to give you guys some time to draft and, and, and nobody's probably really gonna need it sooner than that. So uh, we'll send out some information closer to when that training is coming so that we can kind of keep our, our series going for your local plans on, on training series. And as always, if you have any questions about any aspect of the local planning process, you can submit questions to the WIOA governance at iwd.iowa.gov email address, and, which is included in the PowerPoint. Um, and then the core partner team will work on getting you a response as soon as possible. So I think that covers everything unless anybody has any additional questions for Ryan and Donna today.